we were talking about some heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's put a different angle on our community. Um, okay. Africa is now owned 75 to 80 percent of Africa is economically owned by China. Now I don't know what happened Ooh. to the African leaders, including Nigeria family. 75 to 80 percent of Africa is owned by China. And I'm pretty sure most of the African leaders went to European schools. Do you think it might have been them stepping away from their, for lack of, lack of better terms, their herbal legacy or their voodoo or like Black Panther movie shows using herbs as far as um, a consultation or doing readings? Where are we as people of color on a global level? What's, what's the problem? As I said oh, before, what's going on? <laughs> This is going to be very hard, very hard for people to accept and eat. But here's a, here's a dinner that's not as good as Thanksgiving. Let me explain some from the occultist standpoint, which is where I, which is the uh, perspective I stand on, and I understand. No one, no one. You you have to be born, and something in you has to be able to hear this frequency. So I'm not here to convince anybody of a point of view or debate anybody. But the, the, the more we suffer or the more you see this humanity control slip away from us, that means the more our spiritual prowess is growing. And what you are, as I heard some of what Phil was saying, is greater than atoms in humanity. So that thing that's greater than atoms in humanity, for it to rise – Humanity has to suffer. So as odd as mm. it seems, you got to remember, we ran the planet for millions of years. What are you going to do, take over Africa again? Africa again? First and foremost, you're a universal entity and all things are yours. This entire world is yours. Chinese people are yours. You invented them. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to think mm. bigger. If they regulate us down to this land mass, then you just become another player in the game that you created. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we are doing bigger things. So to be honest, from my perspective, they can have all of that shit because what we own is endless forever, has no beginning and no end. It's only up to us to take our birthright. Our birthright is way beyond a continent. The more to tell you we were here already. So who are the old men yeah. then? You get what I'm saying? Those people in this right. push, who are they in India, but not what we now later they call Africans? We the gods and the goddesses. We create universes. This world is this world is just something we pass through. That's the concept of the Masonic traveler. He understands you're passing through this world. You're not the people who take residence here need to f- figure out how to how to get Africa back. So they could sell more hair weaves than the Chinese people, the niggas. You get what I'm saying? Uh-oh. They could figure that out Uh-oh. all day. They could figure that out all day. That's people who need to be here and don't know it from who they are in a bigger perspective. Now, I get it. If you figure out a way we can make it easier for ourselves, I'm all in. I'm the first one there. But if we're trying to figure out this big economic takeover and why is it happening, it's happening because your spiritual prowess is growing. But we're just, while some of us are indulging and in reaping the benefits from us, which is something that all of us can reap the benefits from, we still have our eye on our human quest. In fact, an inherited human quest that you were signed up for. You didn't come here to do this. You were told this is responsible for you to do as a black person, and all you're really doing is conceptualizing shit. No one's doing – very few people are going there and doing shit, conceptualizing shit. Well, we'll get it back once we do that. Oh, we'll get the Chinese out if they only did that. And if we did that, that'll happen with that. But nothing's really happening. But what is happening, if you jump on this spiritual shit, What is happening, oh, you'll see some magnificent shit. You will realize and feel magnificent shit. You get into your shit, the world will follow you. You got to understand how they follow us anyway, but we're just doing dumb shit. We made rap music, some of the ignorant made and born in some of the most ignorant and hard places 
in, in, in this country at the time. And now rap music runs the world. Everyone wants to do it. So they follow us even in our ignorance. So if we become spiritually adept and know who we are as a more holistic spiritual being, the world will follow our lead. So all of those good human things you want will fall into order. They won't fall into order because you're chasing it at the wrong angle of power. The angle of power you're trying to come at is your worst angle. You're trying to be a better human through the, through the vehicle of humanity, and humanity itself is a flaw. You want to become a spiritual being, and your humanity follow your spiritual cue. So if, what's, if, if I had to say something was going to save us, you better get into your magic, into your spirituality, into your old ancient science, because that's how you ran the world when you were doing it millions of years. I'm not, I didn't run the world for millions of years, stock up in my DNA, all this information only just to run the world again. I'm trying to move on to better things. So from the occultist standpoint, the real answer is, and I know it's hard for some people, is I don't give a fuck what China's doing in Africa. I'm beyond it at this point. I, we, I, in my DNA, I realize what we did there. I reap the benefits because the true book, the true land is in you, where you stand. So what are you doing right. in your environment? Yes, sir. Why the powers that be practice magic. Um, and one mm-hmm. of the things I got to tell the whole audience now, when I came to your first uh, lecture that was at the Black Lady Theater, mm-hmm. all those so-called witches and warlocks, they came in with some fat wallets and some loaded Purses and they were spending right. money. Spending money. What, it, oh I, no no no! Right. And and right. I, then I said, okay, mm-hmm. all right. So maybe maybe it was just a good day on the lunar calendar. I went to the mm. next event. Same thing happened again. I was like, who is this brother named Panic? And how is he pulling in people from Europe? A lot, there was somebody from Alaska. Right. I remember the last time you was here. There's right, Alaska. From Alaska that came down and they were right. spending. All the vendors basically oh, yeah. sold out. What What is yeah, wrong with the average like Negro? And how come there's so many folks bust ass broke and talking about hotep spirituality? Mm. Uh, because they were uh, they were the same person before. They didn't find spirituality. They found a new language. They found a new outfit. They found a, a social group to interact with. So the loser aspect, or if we want to call it that, or the destitute mentality, or this 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 trying to make a dollar, trying to struggle mentality, is something that's been programmed into you. And I teach people how to deprogram themselves from this shit. Abundance is just a choice. So I teach people how who want to make that choice, how to make that choice through classes, through books. Be teaching around the country, be talking for 10 years on blog talk radio, not just information about your graphic, physiology, lunar, uh, 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 atomic reproduction, DNA, transmorph, genesis, free, on related, ultimate unification of melanated shit. Because none of that's helping people. It sounds deep and it sounds like you're being professional. But what people need is practical solutions, everyday ways to change old fucked up habits that were given through you through your fucking slave chip, through your Willie Lynch chip. That's what you really fight in your psyche. That's what we're doing here. Our psyche is programmed. We need to know what in the psyche has a code in mythology called the underworld. So we need to know how to interact in the underworld with the similar Osiris is nothing more than your subconscious mind. We need to know how to interact with that. We know how to interact to because to, when you come into the realm of Osiris, you die, you don't have a body, you come into the realm of your true mind. You have access to many lives. But if you hold on to this life based upon your ignorance, trying to be married to Africa and, and, and all that uh, economic shit we didn't accomplish and black people were poor and, I, and all the kids didn't need, we weren't businessmen. When you have your mind and you die, you, you're creating a round-trip ticket to this place that you are now addicted to. And you look at all the mythologies, they'll give you hints and signs not to get addicted. There's a sign Shiva has Hanuman build a, uh, 
a, 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 a kingdom for this king. But Sheba tells him, um, you can admire it once it's built, but don't live in it. He did. He had Hanneman come destroy it. And, and this was also played out in the movie Willy Wonka, the one with uh, Johnny Depp, which was closer to the book. He made a chocolate kingdom for this king and said, don't live in it. But he did, and, of course, it melted. What they're trying to tell you in code, and there's many ways we can go in this, take, do not take residence here. That's what this idea of I'm the traveler, I'm just passing through. It's not like you're traveling to different lands, that you understand that this is not your home. Africa is not your home. This planet, like any other planet, is something you pass through for the sake of alchemy, for spiritual alchemy. So what I hear is people trying to take residence here. So they're broke because if you take residence here, humanity itself is a broke energy. It's an energy that you need to eat every day. It's just the fact that you need to eat every day is cruel and unusual to, to that which gets eaten. And I'm talking about grapes, too. Cruel and unusual. So the, the very idea of it is sad. So whatever you invest in it, a good economic black man means something, is, something has to suffer. You're in the realm of polarity. Something has to suffer for you to be up. That's why for white people to be up, you are suffering now. The process, the enemy here is this once you finish doing the work. We have built all the pyramids. We have, see, our problem is we don't realize Without hit, without knock on the head of this Hiram Abiff shit, we don't realize that we've already done the damn deed. We already got the T-shirt, and it's time for us to do things to move on to our next reality. You get what I'm saying? And so when I see broke people, that's just because they choose to invest in what people tell them they are, and that's even from the conscious community. They tell them you're an underdog. The white man's got you. You need an economic plan. Your boys are suffering. Your, your daughters are suffering. They're killing you. That could have been my child, Trayvon. You go through the long list of what you think is black lives are matter. You go through the, oh, well, who are you trying to convince of that but white people that you exist? And you matter. So long as you invest in that, you're going to be fucking broke all day. Long as you think, because, see, the, for them to tell you you're from Africa is the way we now say, well, they're from Europe. No, they're, they're a rogue group of people that we created in the cave that we eventually put in Europe that got out and spread over the world. That's who they are. And we own this world. So they took over the world. Chinese people doing their only benefit and at, at your, as you sleep, as the white man put all of these motherfuckers to sleep, you know what I'm saying? So the idea is you're waking up and understanding you have a more holistic reality. And if you start to deal with that holistic reality, it fills in the blanks of your, of, it puts humanity in its proper perspective. And once you, see, you got humanity at the top of the list. Or not you, I'm just saying. Humanity is at the top of the list, and therefore humanity with its natural flaw. If you put it at the top of the list, you're always going to find a flaw. Uh, that's, that's the law of rhythm. Every swing to the left is a swing to the right. So how are you going to stay on the left and talk about I'm running Africa? When our law of Tahuti, fourth, fourth or fifth law, the law of rhythm says whatever swing to the left, there's a swing to the right. You can deal with it by the law of neutralization, which is a form of mental alchemy, but ultimately you cannot annul or stop this principle. So, so for the years that we up and we ran this shit, it's got to be this term. That's the law you say is real. By Tahuti, that's the law. Mm. There's a law of polarity. Like and the like is unlike. Place where duality has to exist at the same time. That's your law. So how are you mad when you're on the other side of it? You're really just trying to figure out how to keep – so you got the, – the key is the occultist knows to get off this fucking swing of, of rhythm, of left and right. It's, it, you got, we have to lose the addiction of humanity, lose this pride thing. How do we get back Africa? We're, we were Africans. No, we're every fucking thing. We're everything. General Shang came over and started the Chinese. 
and that and they gets his name from Shango. You get what I'm saying? There's niggas that start. This is all of ours. So let's not be mm. playing ourselves cheap. Everything here is ours. You know what I'm saying? Including the people that we think is taking us over. We created them. We gave them their culture. What we need to do is step up and take control of the vehicle again, and you need to do it with our African science, not our African pride. You know what I'm saying? All this goddamn pride at what you never did. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we had, we had, mm. your ass lived in Queens, nigga. Your ass lived in fucking <laughs> Mississippi, nigga. You ain't did shit. I don't give a fuck how many times you went to visit. You ain't did shit. You ain't from it. You're from here. And you're here for a reason. You chose to come here for a reason. Work it out, nigga. Like I said, we do everything including every Negro in Africa wants to be the Negro in America, and that's facts. We turn our head backwards, they oh, yeah. turn their hat backwards. We wear our pants off their ass, they wear their pants off their ass. We start doing the butt, they start doing the butt. So in our ignorance, they're following us. Imagine if we get our sense. That's that to get our sense is an internal plight. So when I started teaching 10 years ago of people how to internalize some of these things with methodologies so they can have their own personal realizations. And your personal realizations ain't up for debate. Every prescription is different, but you have to find your own prescription. There's nothing outside of you that's going to save you. All things you need dwell within. You just need to know how to walk within that underworld and reach in, take it out. Reach in, take it out, and make it manifest. And when you do that with all your heart, as a pure heart person with no intention, you'll find your humanity is begging to save you, save itself. It doesn't exist only but what you put into it. So when you, when you start ignoring it, it starts to serve you. So I teach my t- students how, to humanity, how humanity can be used to serve them instead of them serving humanity. You get what I'm saying? And when they did that, they mm-hmm. find out prosperity, prosperity ain't nothing. You get what I'm saying? And, and you know, I know I go on rant. Yes, yo, yo, uh, you, uh-huh. but you're hitting home on a really good point where it's damn if you do and damn if you don't, because a lot of people, I hate to say it, so called conscious community, don't mm-hmm. think it, it's, it's correct to be uh, prosperous. And if you help them out, right. it's a sense right. of resentment. You know, like right. Willie Lynch in your wallet or your purse, you know, because right. from my experience, Brother Panic, you know, like abundance mm-hmm. is a frequency. And sometimes, you know, like mm-hmm. water sure flow, you got that water sure waterfall in the background. You know, sometimes you mm-hmm. give, sometimes the water splashes on the floor. Sometimes you give, but buff ass poverty mentality thinks that, you know, you're trying to set them up to owe them something or they, they you know, it's a whole Mental twist. So the question is, how did so many folks get it twisted where thinking is correct to wear kente and be bust ass broke? Oh, that's easy because it's a psychological thing. Like, first of all, you've been told that you're, you're nothing. See, they, what they think because they are on kente and identify with Africa, that they actually dealt with the problem. And the problem is you're just really under mind control. You're under mind control of of uh, uh, of your slave master slavery because your mind is programmed through trauma symbols and repetition. So we definitely got a a, a, a program in the trauma. Now Phil talked about the morphic field. Like if they inject that in the morphic field of certain folks, other black people can actually have access to it. That's why it becomes if they get a group of us and do it. It's like once they inject it into the, into the water, it spreads all around in certain kinds of ways, as long as they have that main group that they did the ritual on. And, they, and that's what they're talking about in the Willie Lynch. This will work for years to come. They're not just talking about on the slaves. They're talking about they can psychologically now reinforce this. So if this is the core of what their reality is, no matter how much hotep, how many kente claws, how many pieces and beloved, you never change the programming. See, I teach how to actually go in and reprogram yourself to understand prosperity is your birthright. 
know what I'm saying, prosperity. You should not have to suffer as a human, but that's an individual choice. See, you don't, people don't have to deal with it when they, when they blame it on the crowd. See, I could say, you know something, Hank, Uncle Hank, I'm for the babies. But that's general, mm. you know what I'm saying? That's so general. I'm for the black people. I'm for this. I'm for that. It's so general, but it's a psychological way of excusing you from having to do work. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. are you taking care of your babies and every baby around you? What are you doing on a personal level? When my friends get kicked out of their house, do I take their sons and let them live with me for three months and shit like that to save this kid, try to get him straight and, and try to move him forward when he's going through problems? What are you doing there? That's, that's the – I can only save – babies and kids in my field the this idea of the babies don't doesn't exist therefore you can talk about it all day the black economy does not exist therefore you can talk about it all day we can say what black people do and what they spend and call it that but no black people who do you know is just getting together and creating some economic shit on a big level it's not happening uh and this is because what's not really being dealt with is their mentality towards, uh, uh, they just really have a slave mentality with new clothes on, if we want to just call it what it is. They have to understand there's no crime in being prosperous. You've just been programmed to think it doesn't belong to you. They don't know how to fight. There's a, there's a, there's a concept I broke down called when they call nigger rich. If we say things like this, yo, I'm grinding, I'm hustling, you know what I'm saying, another dollar, another day, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents, we know the thousands of things we say about Yo, what's up, Hank? Well, you know, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know, I'm on my grind. Nigga, I'm on point. I'm doing this. I'm trying to get this money. I'm out here doing it. So now when you finally get some money, you have programmed yourself to grind, to hustle, to be about money, so you don't even know what to do when you get it. So that's why we spend it like mm. we do. You know what I'm saying? In clubs and on dumb mm. shit because, because we don't even understand. That's why I remember when you was little, you always had this story there's a white boy in my class or wherever with a whole bunch of money, but why does he have holes in his sneakers? And he seems proud. See, because he, he grew up with money all his life. So when he gets it, there's no idea that he needs to go out and buy a fucking Louis Vuitton suit. That's nigger shit, and that's niggas based on program. That whole book, which is an occult book, but they give it to you like self-help, but they steal from occult concepts called rich dad, poor dad where he clearly points out growing up with a poor dad, you're going to be poor. For no other reason, what he's saying, which could have ended the book in one chapter, is you're being programmed by the same stuff. Nothing has been mm. addressed in our programming. So what's been addressed is in our ego and our consciousness. So we're smart enough to see this little hip-hop shit maybe ain't working. This little Negro shit ain't working, and we're from Africa. Why? Because they're from India, and they're Indian, they're from Europe, they're Europe. So we got to be from someplace that makes us feel a part of it. We're from Africa. So we wear kente cloth, and, and, and I'm in a struggle. I go to Egypt, but nothing has been addressed in the psyche to say true reflection of how you see yourself. You're dressing. In fact, most people are putting on dreads, kente cloth, and changing their language to hide in the fact that they don't feel it. Now, like I said, I've been doing this for 10 years. So I've been getting questions and been talking to black people from around the world for just that long, you know what I'm saying, directly in this Internet age. And what I can absolutely tell you is a bunch of window dressing happening because the question they ask are like children to me all day. I rarely get something mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, let's, let's research for that. Oh, that's a, you need to read that book. It's the same fucking ten books over and over, and both and everything is a starter set because no matter how much and these are people who lecture, who I've had to say, wait, 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 let's go back. Did you ever do this or do you you know did you ever do you can you do that or can you do this? You understand this is that if you did this or if you meditated and focused visually on this, this would happen. There's ways to do, you know, so on and so forth to the point where I'm really discussing th to them how they need to reprogram themselves. They're trying, we're, mm. we're, we're now a reactionary people, and we don't understand our action comes through how we see ourselves and how we see ourselves has been created for us, even so much so to, to make us like we're in a gang fight 
by just saying, you're just from Africa. So now we have a gang in the land to represent. We don't even see that. We can say how, wow, the goddamn Crips and Bloods are fucking absolutely silly for fighting over Compton and fighting over Long Beach, right? We would say that. Why are they fighting over shit? So why are you arguing and fighting for also land as well? They got you with the same psychological hustle. You just think it's more pristine because there's kente cloth, and that's where the cradle of civilization so-called started. But I thought this was one continent at first. We'll say that. Like, make up your mind. It was one continent, and then it's Atlantis and Lemur, then all of a sudden everything is starting in Africa. It's like, no, who are the Omex then? Why, why are the Omex heads here? It's all ours. Easter Island, it's all ours. You know what I'm saying? They got pyramids in China. They won't, the Chinese won't show you because there's niggers there. That's right. There's pyramids That's in right. the goddamn Grand Canyon. There's pyramids in the Grand yep. Canyon that will certify niggers here. They ain't showing you that because when you see it, you may start to realize I'm a, a this entire planet is mine. And when you look at that, anybody outside of the order of your thinking in your right mind, let's just say, is the one that's the goddamn agitator, is the one that needs to be dealt with. You are now made to feel like you're the menace, that you're the, you're the one that needs to get it together. You can't figure it out. No, they put you in a place of law. You, they put you in a place without the science. They demonize the pathway of, of the occult, and even the very things you hold on were created for you to love. You don't even, the, the stuff that you think you're using as a power base is how they regulated you down to fight. You're fighting their fight. Once you say the world mm-hmm. is yours, what fucking what what can they claim to even fight you with? And they can't back it up. You've been here too long, and you everywhere. So once you tell them, oh, I'm everywhere, and all of this is mine. So everything they do, anywhere they do it, is a fucking crime. So it's not like they come into Africa and raping them, but if they went to China, no, this planet is yours. So if they went to China and raped it, it's yours too. You're just not controlling it anymore. So to, to the Chinese people, if black people won't stand up and control at least that area where most of their faces still are, then you would do the same thing. If, you had the, if black people had the power, we wouldn't be like, oh, that's China. We need to leave that alone. We'd be there. We'd be there. Mm. We're, we're, we lose power. We lose power because you've been regulated to the same box store. Listen, y'all think they're going to make clones? They have made clones. If you talk to every conscious person, I would say 70% of them would repeat the same thing. How do you feel about Trayvon Martin? Same thing would happen. How do you feel about Africa? Same thing would happen. Same thing. Say Hotep. Everybody fucking knows it. You know what I'm saying? I was the first one to complain about this. I was like, it's a key word of saying, I want to be in your gang or I'm in your gang. Whole tab. I'm in your gang. I've mm. seen people struggle and just say shit just to say it. Okay, bye. Oh, ooh, I've been uh, peace greeting, peace and, 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 and blessings, <laughs> goddess. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All day. Because they're trying to get a lingo because they're trying to be included in something. And like I said, if they was broke before, they're thinking somehow this can help. But if they didn't change their psyche, that's not going to help. So what I'm t- you, we're, we're doing, let's just look at it more practically. We're doing this and saying the same fucking story, and how come nothing's changed? We're in the same fucking position we were when we started talking about this shit. You know what I'm saying? We're Africa, and we're Africans, and it braid, you know, start braiding your nappy hair and put on dashikis and, and fight for power. All of these things are just – but, see, here's the greatest thing. Here's the greatest psychological thing you claim, that you're in a struggle. That's another thing. You no, know, just in the struggle. So if you're in a struggle, how are you going to be economically rich when you have programmed yourself over and over to say you're in a struggle? And if you're not personally saying it, Every person on TV has told you that at one point. You grow up here and black people are struggling. We're in a struggle. What you mean? 400 years, 400 years, 400 years. So how are you going to psychologically step up and say, I'm prosperous? You, you, your whole life has been programmed with, I'm in a struggle. We, we, you know, we just trying to get it. You know what black people need, what black people need. 
Let me tell you what black people need to do, young boy. Come over here. If you're not saying it, it's been said to you. And what I told you was repetition programs the subconscious mind. You have been repetitiously programmed. See, people, uh, Martin Luther King is a, is a, is a, is a, he was an agent. What was the agent? What was his assignment? They don't know. We was prosperous. You see, how America works, there's a white elite and then there's the white dirty, most of them are white regular people. What white elite did was made them overseers and let them know, no matter how funky your life gets, you'll always be better than a Negro. And so once we're freed, they understood this system was going to go on. They don't need to have you living at their house. The system would be system would go on, you would still be their slave. But something started happening. We started making our own self-contained uh, 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 towns, and they were thriving. So now the order of things, these poor whites, they were supposed to be ahead of us. Why are we beating them? Because we were resorting back to what we usually do, self-contained. Every man has to have something to offer before we become a community. You got thousands and thousands of conscious people with nothing to offer talking about we are a community and let's get it on. But what can you bring to the table? We had butchers, bakers, and candlestick makers that came together and made a town. So now the white people come, Black Wall Street, destroy all of this because they had to because, because it, the system won't work if we're actually the slave is better than the average dude that we're going to argue with. The elite ain't arguing with us. It was their overseers and these little white everyday people that you running into the street with Black Lives Matter. That's all by design. That's all by design. And we fall right into this crap. So now what they did to really get it in check, they gave you the agent, Dr. Martin Luther King, and he said, we need to start integrating with them. Because what was happening, we were thriving when we were separate from them. So we start integrating right. with them, and then we then this is where even today in the conscious community you get we and us and what we need to do and what black people need to do and the babies and the women respect and protect them and all of this shit. This is from Martin Luther King, the agent. It put us together in a system that is not designed to work. We're trying to move as a unit when our when the base of who we are aren't ready to move in that quantum world, into that quantum way of thinking. So as individuals, we need to do work. We need to, we need to do chakra work, reflect on these fucking hurtful humans' emotions and learn methodologies from freeing them to become pure of heart, to understand that your spirituality speaks to you all the time. Each time you fuck up, something told me I shouldn't have did that. Each time you did something, something told me, I, well, that's something that tells you it's constantly talking to you. What you need to do is reflect inward, and then that, that, that something told me becomes a full-blown conversation with all the ancestors that you think you're talking to. That you, oh, that, that ancestor, ancestor. The ancestors are nothing but dead people and energy fields left behind that you can access that are conscious and have information. They're not looking out for you. They don't give a fuck about you until you invest in it. That's why you're so fucked up now, because you're not truly invested in ancestors. You're invested in the fucking idea of it. You have to do that inner work. You have to reflect inwardly. You have to tell yourself, nigga, I'm a human. I fuck up. I ain't shit. I ain't that deep. I'm small. I am nothing. Shut your fucking ego down so your spirit can say, well, let me show you what you really are. And let me show you what your birthright is. And let me show you that you're bigger than any landmass. Let me show you that you're bigger than any one universe. Let me show that the mind is all the universe is mental and your divine mind is God. All of us are God with a divine mind. It actually, that's a, 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 just a title. You're actually a titan, and a titan is a chaos being. A titan is what they call potential energy. Anything can manifest, including universes, from your mind, mm. worlds from your mind. But the source of that comes from potential energy that's called melanin, chaos energy. You get what I'm saying? You don't work in this goddamn place that you're going to die. This is not where you set up shop. This is where you pass through, and whatever state this world is in, you chose to come here to get the fucking experience of this debauchery. Pressure makes diamonds. I don't want to live fuck I want to live in a pristine world for because I come from a pristine world. You understand? I don't need mm. to come from a pristine world to come to a place I need to take shits in, to find food in. 
to wonder if my child is going to get shot in the head in? You get what I'm saying? To wonder what them niggas going to say and do next in? To wonder why that nigga's in front of my door in? Now, I came home the other day, 2 a.m. Some nigga sitting in front of my goddamn door. What's up, brother Pendle? Wow. You know me. Like, who the fuck are you? You know what I'm saying? It took three minutes for his drunk ass to realize the gun was in his face. I said, I have no problem. Nothing morally. I will fucking go through you. Get the fuck off my... He had a suitcase. An old ass suitcase. One of them suitcases from the 70s. That hard blue shit. Like, what in the fuck you doing? And he walking out of my subdivision. So much you know me from the gram, Instagram. So, no, this is madness here. Let's not kid ourselves. All this... I'm conscious and uh, beloved, and that's bullshit. It's a bunch of sick niggas found something on the web <laughs> that they could fucking talk about. There's motherfuckers that follow me around like groupies. I disrespect every one of them because I'm not here for groupies. I'm not here for ass kisses. Learn the shit. Get it. It's yours. I'm only reflecting your information. Learn it. Get it. Understand it and become whatever it is you came here to do. But what we didn't come here to do was set up shop in a place you dine at anyway, a place that's built with something. See, we think the white man is the cause of our suffering. But if you study all the ancient mythology, the ancient man who, you're, who, who, who they think they're trying to mimic understood it ain't had nothing to do with man. It was humanity that was your true enemy. If you buy into it. So the idea to die and never come back, why are they doing that? If they the Egyptians and they had it going on, why all of they study was death? How come there's no hieroglyphs about fucking food uh, or to eat? No hieroglyphs about fucking economic plans. No hieroglyphs about how to save the babies. No hieroglyphs about how to respect and protect the black woman. Every hieroglyph is about how to fucking die and never come back, or at least the majority of them are. And they were big on this because they understood what I'm telling you now. This is not a resting place. This is a place you go to. Look at the, look at the movie Riddick, uh, the, the first movie Riddick. It, I, broke, I broke this down somewhere. I, I, I don't know if it made my book, but, it's, and, but when he drops in this place called Cremoria, Cremoria which represented the root chakra, he, they asked, oh, he said, how long are you staying here? He said, oh, I'm not staying here. I'm just passing through. And then I remember that the whole chakra. I remember okay, that. Okay, now, okay, well, then let's get into it. Remember, they dropped him on a string that represented the cord falling down from heaven. Remember, Obatala with this cord, and it's just the spine. He went all the way down. He rolled all the way down. That represented the twirl. He was in Cremor. Remember, they sent the two dogs after them, yin and yang. Remember, yep. he knew how to calm them down. Time. That showed he had control. That it showed he had control of Kundalini. Then he went to that second level. That was the sacral chakra. Whatever they do in movies, they never go in the sacral chakra too hard. Then he went to the third level where it was the hot sun. It was the uh, solar plexus. He was doing it for that girl, Kyra, who was the little girl in the other movie. She had green all on her. She represented the heart. That was his whole thing. When the sun came, he went into the cave where Lord Marshall's uh, uh, stooge started talking to him. The cave represented the mouth or the throat chakra. And he started giving them the information. He said, I'm also a Furian just like you, which means he's saying we are of the same communication. Lord Marshall represented the pineal. He went, stabbed Lord Marshall, opened up the pineal, and then he sat on the crown chakra at the end. It was a chakra story. You're waking your right. way back to your crown, and it's not in a continent called Africa. It's not in America. It's not in China. It's not here. You're, this is a place you go through. You're going through the alchemical experience, and now you were lost, sleep, and it has. You was going to sleep way before white people got here. They only got here when you was dead sleep. So it's not like they're doing it. What, what you, there's an energy that seeks to keep this place in existence. It's called the demiurge energy. Y'all, the bro, if you could find it in Gnostic thought, if you want to go deeper, read some Gnosticism to understand that they can, in their mythology, they talk about a lesser deity that creates this place, and there's a human energy that he's invested in because he eats off of worry. He eats off of your strife. He eats off of everything you niggas been going through. He eats off of you in church. Like, even though the white man uses your energy in church to do his shit, but all he's really trying to do is actually become you. 
but he's trying to become you without you knowing he's trying to become you. He's trying to become you because your birthright is everlasting life. But you're going, but death for us is actually going through this cycle of earth over and over. You're, you are trapped here by your own mind, and your own mind lusting for a better Africa, lusting for those Chinese people to stop selling you weed here, lusting for more record labels, lusting for better schools, lusting to train your little black boys, lusting to train your little black women better and get them off the Love and Hip Hop show. When you die, all you have is a bunch of fucking lust and not knowing who your true self is. So how could you move on? All you know is this. You're addicted. They call that in jail, uh, uh, what's that what they call when you keep going back and forth to jail? Back and forth to jail. They let you out of jail, but all you know is jail life. So you go back. You um starts with an I. Um, institutionalized institutionalized. Mm. Niggas institutionalized humans. They're this, your, your soul is trapped in your fucking body. That's, that's, that is a, 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 a cult 101. Your soul is trapped in your body. You're, you're talking about how beautiful your prison is. How, you, how all you're talking about is how yeah, we used to run the prison in Africa and, and, and now the Chinese took over. We need to start stabbing niggas in their side and get the prison, and we need to get that piece of land back, that piece of resource back. The fuck you going to do? Go over there and, and, and say, now we own Africa, so now we can sell gold around the world? Niggas wouldn't even know what the fuck to do with that shit. They'll be doing the same shit they're doing over here, turning African resources into fucking jewelry so they can wear it at the fucking hip-hop honors awards. They'll be doing the same shit again. Ain't, it's the mentality that we need to attack, and the mentality has been regulated down to a gang fight. So you started claiming Africa, claiming this, and we did this. We did all of this shit. We need to expand what we claim. America's yours. You deserve to be in this motherfucker dealing with the resources. And the resources of the day is that fiat money. Play with it, and they're they trying to get you. It's not real money. Nah, none of this shit is real. This world ain't real. This is the Matrix, motherfucker. How you saying that it's not real in a world that's not real? You're in an illusionary world. This money is not real. Guess what? You're not fucking real neither. You understand? <laughs> you got to think bigger. We think fucking small. And in and, and our small thought, we don't even realize we think small. Because there's, I'm mm. sure there's not a concept I said that you did not know. You get what I'm saying? But we still find ourselves saying, Africa and the black women and our people, but all of that shit comes from programming. All of it comes from programming. So if you really do you know what programming, mm-hmm. yes, sir. You just brought up a powerful point, bro. The mm-hmm. brothers that I know from um, Dr. Phil Valentine, yourself, mm-hmm. Brother mm-hmm. Rich, mm-hmm. even Sornetta. Y'all got powerful Mm -hmm. sisters at your side. Oh, no doubt. Let's get into that. Let me tell you. Go into it, brother. That's when I came to rock. Well, let me me give credit, at least from my perspective, where that shit is due. That comes from my master teacher, my brother. He's like an uncle, a brother, shit, maybe a son sometimes, a father. He's been that particular entity, brother Bobby Hemmings all props to my brother. And that's the first brother that I went hard with telling me what absolutely devoting yourself to a to the white black woman in love can actually do for your power. And I just like, nigga, you're a sucker for love. Cut it out. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you get this little metaphysical juice, you know what I mean? You You get a lot of attention. So, you know, you're living it up. Now, I was good. Cause I made rap music all my life, so I always, you know, it wasn't like this never happened before. So I was, you know, enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? A coven of witches. We were all cooperating. You know what I'm saying? Did all of that. But then Bobby's words started to resonate, and he told me about the power of one woman. And I totally submitted. And listen, that's the key here. Not, not in the theory. Listen closely now. The black woman and the black woman. 
it's us as a unit. When 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 I was able to find myself, it was the only way I would have been able to find Khadijah. Um, so to find your soulmate, how do you find your soulmate? Like, see, people are like, I want to find my soulmate, Panic. I said, define a soul. Um, um, mm. If you don't even know what a soul is, or at least the concepts where you can study it in the concept, because really you can only deal with the concept of a soul. You only, First of all, most of the shit that's about souls or spoke on is a Gnostic thought about this divine spark of light. All it is is a spark of light. You are not doing shit or interacting with your soul. It's your spirit. You have three aspects of you, your humanity, your spirit, and your soul. Your humanity will die, as you know, and never leave earth. Your, your spirit can go to the astral world in earth, but your soul is what lives forever and can possibly go beyond. Me personally, my soul isn't down here. When C. Freeman L. died, I talked to him, and he told me about we actually have avatars and know how to project energy down here to do this work. But when I die, I'm not going through the same process of somebody who needs to ascend. I did this work a long time ago. So to come down here, that's why I can retain a lot. That's why Brother Phil can retain a lot. Some of the teachers, they can do it because they're actually not down here. They send avatars down. You'll find that in Hindu mythology. Sri Ramakrishna said it happened to, to uh, uh, Sri River Kananda. And Sri Ramakrishna told him, who was his teacher and a student of Kali, he told him, you're going to die on this day. You're just going to ascend and leave the body. And that absolutely happened. Vivekananda came and talked to me. They gave me meditations. I give them out over the years. I did lectures on them because they were so powerful in their transmission. Those were some Negro niggas. Here, yeah, Sri Vivekananda doesn't get the credit, but they started giving the credit for actually bringing yoga to the West here. He taught many I mystery remember schools that. I remember. out here. Okay, okay, I'm sure you know the game. And um, so Sri Vivekananda, he'll come through, but they'll uh, – uh, uh, when you most in mythology, the soul is actually encoded in a lot of shit. But where they talk about it outright as this divine spark of light, they talk about it in um, Gnosticism big time. So you're not so people so people don't even know what their soul or their soulmate is. What's the difference between a soul and a, and, and a twin flame? I said it's just what people named it because they're a guy friends I had that are kindred spirits. You know they're your brothers. You know you knew them out of other lifetimes. Y'all just meet, and it's like incredibly kaboom. And But with Khadijah, soulmate doesn't even encapsulate. It's not like we, we just knew each other forever. It's, it's incredible. We just knew each other forever. And, and what usually happens is where the guy tries to uh, fight, you know what I'm saying, try to remain his guy. But this is where Bobby kept talking, like, no, just let go. And that voice in you that's trying to check her, let it go. So I went full block, body. The first thing I did, not even knowing how to drive a vehicle, still alone, I moved from New York to Atlanta. I have no family out here. It was all on this girl. She could have said, you know something, I don't like you no more. I would have been done. But that was a way of dealing with certain things in my chakra system based upon trust of my mother. So to release certain things, I had to, because you, your, your woman becomes your new mother. So I had to reacquaint myself with my mother, you get what I'm saying, by trusting again. So moving from New York to Atlanta all, all balls out. And then finally, one of the other things I did, I, when I bought our house, I put nothing in my name. Everything's in her name. If she said, get out tomorrow, I have no recourse, no way to say what. Besides, you need to write me a letter for 30 days. And, you know, I did. So it was me, something I personally had to do to put myself in a constant situation of having to trust her. Help me to let go of my so-called male egotistical power. So I, I don't recommend everyone do this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. There's a prescription of things that you need to do personally, and those answers come from within. So we got to stop looking at all black people talking about what's the answer. The answers are what you need. I needed that based upon my childhood, and it made me stronger in terms of trusting that divine feminine, not because she's some sweet lady that needs to be uh, respected and protected, which she is, 
in which I do, but because the other half of me is the divine feminine. I am a balance of both. So not to respect or trust them is not to trust myself. You get what I'm saying? So oh, you got to understand. Hold that thought, brother. Hold your... that thought. Okay. I just, yes, I just want to make the announcement. Brother Panic is one of the keynote speakers. In addition to uh, Baba Phil Valentine, December 16th, 2018. Doors open at 1 p.m. Event is from 2 p.m. to midnight. $50 in advance. $60 at the door. $25 live stream at the Alahaba Ballroom, 2116 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard in the village of Harlem. For vending, call 347-530-4211. For more information, call 646-472-4219. Please continue, brothers. Yes, sir. And also my queen will be speaking at this event. Um, oh, and yet another power when I witnessed she had blew me away. I'm like, wow. Like, I'm in awe of her speaking, and I'm sure you guys will see for yourself. Those A lot of people know her from her readings, and, you know, they're dazzled by it. But she's a genius within herself. And then you've talked to her plenty of times to know she's a genius within herself. And I'm in awe Brilliant. of it because I'm in awe of myself. If, if Once you submit, you really, you really realize she's the other half of yourself manifested. So it being in awe of her is still being in awe of myself, and it's how you learn. And, and, and when you submit, she can give me honest critiques about myself to improve myself. A plus, ain't, a plus with a black woman ain't the word. It's the only way out of this. Mm. One other thing um, I would say about that is once I did everything to make her comfortable, her true black power came online. See, it took a while even when she was like, okay, I'm going to go out with the girls. You know, every moment there was a text. So, all right, we're at the movies now. We're at this. I'm like, oh, you think you're actually disturbing my free time now. I'm like, yo, listen, I'm not sweating it. I trust you. They just never had a Negro that trusted them. You know what I'm saying? Where you at? You sure you was with Betty? You know what I'm saying? So when she seen none of that, that alone was breathtaking to her that I wasn't jealous. Now, do what you need to do. She's gone now. You know, I'm not pacing, wondering when she's going to text. I don't care. She's seen I really didn't care. Those things that we take for granted, that we think is a relationship, that when you relieve a black woman from, then their true power comes online. So if you want to respect and protect, make it absolutely comfortable for them and watch what they become. They become, she's my sister, friend, mother, fuck buddy, wife queen, goddess, enemy, friend, every single thing that a woman could possibly be, she fits that role, which means, to me, she's an absolute complete woman, absolute complete woman. And this is because there's no stress on her. Brother Phil talked about that eloquently about men is supposed to eat this stress. And a stress-free woman is the most effective woman. So if she ain't worrying about bills, one of the first things I did when I got here was saying, never worry about a gas bill or electric bill. And then it eventually turned in, don't pay nothing. She, the power turned on, you know what I'm saying? Because she didn't have to uh, pick up the slack for being a man. She had two boys, mm. I mean, my sons. So now she didn't have to be a daddy no more. I showed up what a daddy was. And, and put put change the game for them. You know what I'm saying? They'll tell you themselves. You know what I'm saying? The oldest ones still hate me, which means I did a good job. Get what I'm saying? Mm. Did a good job. He was on a path of total destruction when I got here. I changed, he's in college now. And that's not nothing big for for us, but for him it's how he's at least going to be able to survive out here because we still have to factor in the fact that we need to survive. So it's not about we're proud that he's in college because he's learning something. He ain't learning shit. We're proud that he'll be able to. We don't have to take care of his ass forever. You get what I'm saying? And mm. and, and and we would have been taking care of his ass forever if it wasn't for me. We'd have, uh, she'd have been sending him commissary. You get what I'm saying? So and he's still mad at certain things because I had a lot of work to do. When I came, he was only 17. So he thought he was wrong. So I had a lot of work to do. 
but it took a lot of shit off of Khadija's plate. Same thing with, see, Torin, who was a little bit younger, you know, he adores me as a father, and um, that's because he was younger when I came, so I was more influ- influential. Keenan was just a little bit too old, you know, so, but this made her free to be a true woman. So ain't no beefing, you know, there's still what men consider nagging about cleaning up. But ultimately, I'm enjoying this shit because she, that's the happy wife, happy life. You make her happy, that's when the power turns on. You know what I'm saying? So mm. absolutely, I, I attribute. Well, people attribute it. There's no mistake. Listen, when I was lecturing, I didn't have Khadija in the beginning. And boy, was I coarse. But they started to see my change with Khadija. Oh, I go to lectures. There are people who be lining up just to thank her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know what I mean? For doing that for panic. Because I was really raunchy before. There was nothing to lose. I think it was wrong. And, oh, I was terrible. You know what I mean? People were scared to ask me questions. You know what I mean? You'll find that still happens because, oh, I wasn't playing. You ask me, you come in, you ask me something silly, oh, you was going you to hear that story. Oh, you was going to hear that story <laughs> in that moment. So people were scared to be embarrassed. So now I started going a little bit more softer. You know, panic, why is water wet? You know, what you say? You know what I'm saying? How do I get wet water? You ain't got to force it. I mean, why, you know what I'm saying? Or, man, I could do this, I could do that. Fuck you on the phone with me for Go do it. You know what I mean? Which is really the, which is really the true answer. What the fuck you need to call mm. and tell everybody the shit you could do? I'm feeling in my morphic field grid resonances of cosmic uh, lunar proportions in retrograde with Mercury and Uranus' moon. Like, then, if you're doing all of that shit, the fuck you on the phone with me? Start your own blog mm. talk radio and do it. And, and, which is a true statement, but I, but I would tell him that statement instead of saying, oh, beloved, what a wonderful job you have done. This is what we need more of. I'm so wonderful to hear this. You ain't wasn't hearing that shit from me. Now you'll hear, all right, good job, man. Keep up the good work, you know, without really giving it to him. And that was because, and they, people noticed that. That was because of Khadija. I could go on in many ways how she's changed my reality, but it only came when I when I pretty much pledged my heart to it. But you got to know who you're doing that to and for. You know what I mean? And I only was able to do it once I only when I was into self, only when I transformed self. If I was a regular dude, I would, she would just been another person I've been trying to get a dog in style from. We joke all the time. I tell her if I met you when I live, I would scoop your ass. She said, you, hell no, you wouldn't. And I said, the reality is I wouldn't be able to recognize her power back then because I didn't recognize my own power. This is about you. Mm. It's always been about you. It, it's your heart. It's your chakras. It's your kundalini. And until you, how could you find love if your shit ain't right? You make your shit right, then your soulmate will emerge. Because your soulmate mm-hmm. is, she's doing your soulmate, she or he is doing the same thing as you. Know why? Because he's your fucking connection and your soulmate. So they are conscious. Mm. If you're conscious, they're out there. And they're conscious too. Why? Because they are you. Just with different genitals. So they are out there. Ain't no, I got to find her and make her something. No, they're out there. And even if they're not conscious, you may find yourself, you're conscious and you're with like somebody who's considered human. Bobby Hammond would even speak on it is like whatever reason y'all fell in love, that's what y'all need to enhance. As long as that person is not inhibiting your conscious path, that's the person. So that person may be doing whatever they're doing, but as long as they're not stepping their foot on it and they're open to what you're doing, you may need to consider that may be your person too. Mm. And if it's not, don't just, you, you know, I, I get that a lot too. I want to leave them. They're not conscious. But this woman been with you 10, 15 years, washing your back. You know what I'm saying? She got your kid. Just because she's not saying hotep enough for you, she's your woman. So you still need to understand that your love will, your love is conquering that. Maybe you're doing the work for both sides of you guys. You get what I'm saying? There's so many, it, it, see, we're, we, we have now been trained to look for one solution, one reason. And now I know how I know we've been trained into doing this one solution, one reason, because now you have such a thing as niggas debating. 
See, niggas is debating. A debate is trying to come down to one common ground. See, the Egyptians would look at that as fucking folly because they understood there was many ways, many paths to light. If you're, the, the question becomes, are you finding light? Are you becoming enlightened by what you're doing? And if that answer is yes, then good job. If you're walking around and your ego's getting bigger and broader by what you're doing, you failing, son. And I can prove that. So if you have more words and you know more shit than anybody on the block, good fucking job. What do you think? You got a special place somewhere? You tell me you're going, when you die, you're going to see niggas. And what niggas, what, what do you think niggas think about fancy words? See, a cat don't care about a morphic field grid. A cat only knows how to be a cat, and that's cat perfection. A monkeys don't need instructions to be monkeys. So what's mm. in you is natural, just like a cat knows how to fucking be a cat. It knows what to do with its paws. It knows what to do with its nails. It knows when to hiss, and it knows when to piss. It don't need no science. Mm. What's in you really don't need no science. In this particular way to cultivate what's in you, because we're so lost, now we need books and shit to kind of give you a perspective on some of the things you may be tapping into. But, but mm. understand, that's because we're so far from what we naturally are. But see, if we're truly raising kids and what they naturally are, they will never need books. We now need books to remind us. So we should be taking these books, we should be coming it, and our, and, and our offspring should be a manifestation of what we have become. And they will never wow. need a book. They just do it. You think Donald Trump is reading how to rich, be rich and grow quick. Like, my, my nephew was going to get a gig at FUBU. And then, of course, the owner of FUBU, Damon John, gave him, like, 30 fucking books to read. Think fast and grow rich. How to be rich and never lose it. Rich quick and poor bad rich dad. All this shit. You think Trump's father gave him all that shit? No, he gave him $40 million and say, do work, son. Learn by trial and never. It's in you because I raised you for this to be your reality. You think son, Trump's son, you think they're going to sit with you in politics and just be kicking it, have a good old time? You don't even exist to them only because they were raised that way. So we need to raise our kids a certain way. Baby. You think Trump kids are reading all these books on how to run real estate shit? No, their father mm -hmm. is passing it down to by action. Our actions say why our kids are so fucking stupid. We don't want to believe. We keep blaming white people, but your personal kids are fucking stupid. Personally. Sonetta put up that mm. picture of Jesus, Marcus Garvey, and goddamn Malcolm X. And every kid. I remember that. Back. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Where the fuck is that? When are we going to address that? Because it's not about Jesus. It's about them thinking they've been mind controlled and believing what is white is going to save you. So symbolically, anything white people do, you, you like it or love it, you still react to it. Niggas, you cry when Obama won, and you niggas cry when Trump won too. So y'all niggas ain't go nowhere. Y'all ain't go nowhere. Y'all ain't change. You're fucking, they can change shit for your ego all day. You love Obama. You hate Trump. But at the same day, you're still reacting to rulership that you don't control. You're under the illusion that mm. you can control it through voting. Any conscious nigga wow. voting is out of his fucking mind. Out of his fucking mind. You got this fucking fat, greasy, hobbit nigga <laughs> called Roland, Roland Martin sitting there, first of all, brung Umar Johnson on his show for no other reason but to shit on him. But he, even that then, he couldn't deal with Umar Johnson's intelligence. So he couldn't embarrass him like he intended. But, but after all these tweets, myself included, laughing at the voting concept, he gets on his show, which is on New York One, pretty much said in a nice way, no, actually went on a Tom Joyner show and said the conscious people need to shut the fuck up. He said, these conscious idiots don't know nothing. They sitting there saying vote. They sound stupid. They don't know their history. He gave a straight out smack in the face to conscious people. Oh, I so was hoping Brother Phil would hear that. Brother Phil would murder that idiot. And it's, 
Now, what was interesting is shit like that I see all day doesn't bother me. Certain times I I know when it's something spiritual happening because I really I would get offended. You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares about this little grease, greasy Negro? You know, Michael Dyson and all the rest of them are just idiots. You know, first of all, no matter how deep they, they think they are, you fail because you, you believe in Jesus. Like, you failed then. If you're so deep, why do you still believe in Jesus? I mean, you can find that shit ain't real in three minutes. So I know they're not deep, but some, something in how he said this felt like, an, like an, a true attack, a true spiritual attack. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys answered it, but see, what he tries to do is the wordsmith thing. And, you know, not many people deal with the wordsmith aspect that would go on. So he would look very professional, but he couldn't do that to, to elders like Brother Phil, let's just say. You know what I mean? You know, and it's not really like Phil needs to address them. He, I, I, I would say the, the whole concept, Phil actually already addressed what voting is. He's already done a lecture on voting, and that is actually a wish. You know what I'm saying? So it, it would be like a dream thing for me more than actually having Brother Phil give his attention to such a monkey. But monkeys like that say these type of things and can make these attacks because what they're doing, whether they're conscious of it or just really that idiotic, is standing on this civil rights crap, this civil rights crap of as it was our greatest victory in all existence, that nothing happened before this that made you great. So we can do nothing but the same concept to move forward. Black people got a problem with this. Once we do something, and let's say it was a success, even though that shit was totally orchestrated, but in their minds, they believe it's a success, this whole civil rights movement. Is they can't let it go. What's the next thing then? So it's the same thing. Africa was already a success for you. Let it go. Wow. Everything is yours. Let it go. Everything is yours. Why are you so scared to take over? See, that's really the thing. We're so scared to take over this entire reality again. We just want our little piece of the rock. What a pittance compared to what you are. One continent mm. that they that's not even that's not even the true name, I'm sure. It's a pittance nope. to who you are. We're not gonna talk about all this power we got, crystals, organs and all this shit, but then we live then we talking about our little our little corner in Compton. Nigga from Queensbridge, nigga. I represent Queensbridge. It's a project you were born in, dog. That's all. There's people born in there's black people born in Compton, Mississippi, Alabama, Nevada. Khadiz was from Denver. Had no clue niggas was in Denver. Fucking Denver. Kansas. We Denver. everywhere. We yeah. We still don't even think we have like in America. Guy, John Denver. <laughs> yeah, John Denver. Yeah, she just, Country she, Road. She don't Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You think of that? But here's the deal. Her uncle used to make pyramids, copper pyramids, for earth, wind, and fire, shit that you could meditate wow. under. And John Denver came and got him some of that wow. from her uncle in Denver. He called himself John Denver because he hangs out in Denver. He probably got another name. His name is John Wachowski. <laughs> so the, the, point I'm getting, the point I'm getting at is um, – <laughs> I can't remember the point at this point. <laughs> okay, we need that was to, a funny uh, shit. That was a funny shit. Yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah. I mean, you know, but you know, uh, you know, Denver. Is, I haven't gone, but what she's telling me is like, I, I don't think I can avoid it in terms of how how it is. But she said nothing but black people. This is a bunch of black people. Like rec- she grew up there. It's not like they just got they they come in there now. But it's not like they just got there. She said no. Oh, she grew up there and went right over to Kansas. You know what I'm saying? And all the rest of that. Her sister lived in South Dakota for a while. Like, no, there's niggas everywhere. I've sell, I've sold my herbs all around the world. And I wow. all, and, and and I can promise you this. I can promise you this. There's not a state I have not touched more than once in this country. I, you, well, you, you was there. You ask the person where did they come from and what did they say? That nigga. I sure did. Alaska. They were from everywhere. 
It was from everywhere. It didn't but come a nigga broke. from Alaska they came was loaded. There. Yeah, what are, what are niggas doing from, oh, they loaded because, no, 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 I don't talk to whole teppers. You understand what I'm saying? Whole teppers ain't interested in this because, as you can see from the night, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about the things that make them feel comfortable. You, we all African, we all need to do this, and, oh, they tried on us, and look at those silly Black Lives Matter people. They're not smart like us, you know what I'm saying? Whole tep, they're not smart like us because it's only if they got an onk. They'll be able to change their lives. Like, that's all that's really happening. Me and Brother Shabazz, we made up a fake word, and we was using it, and people were responding to it, like, as a greeting. We just made up umbala umbele, and niggas was going umbala uba at a lecture. We couldn't believe how oh. many people. That's how easy it is. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That we used to, I used to laugh and joke. This was even before I was really speaking. We was laughing and joking. I used to call, like, all the stuff they call them whole teppers, that is my flagship shit. I was saying that early on when people were buying into it. When everybody was saying check, I said, this is the church, church of check. Y'all say check like it's hallelujah. I said, ain't nothing changed here. I was always, nothing's changed here. I, see, uh, not really lucky, but let's say lucky for lack of a better word. My parents weren't into church. Never, never once had my father or mother bring me in a church. Not once. But here's the, here's the other odd thing. My grandfather on my mother's side, he was a straight occultist. He was in the OTL and all of them old white Bovatsky, uh, 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 uh occult groups. He was getting documents. He was dealing with it. So he was conscious. So my grandmother was in it. So my grandparents were in it. On my, grand, on my father's side, they was Creole. They weren't in that shit neither. So you mm. leave your parents ain't taking your grandparents. So I don't have church. That's why I said to truly raise a child is us that has to do with our child. And Sonetta proved how stupid our children are, period. They don't even know who fucking Malcolm X is. You could know who Malcolm X is just accident. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. Marcus Garvey is just off an of accident. And they don't even know who he is, but they damn sure know that fucking Jesus. That's our problem. And let me tell you, and that, that's what we need to deal with. And once you start dealing with that, you'll start to see economic plans start to unfold. You won't have to deal with that. You won't even worry about Chinese people. You'll be too busy with this on your plate. And because there's more you niggas anywhere, you will supersede any group, any race. Because you have more melanin, more genius, you will do it, but we're just not doing it. And we're not doing it because we're not dealing with some straight mind control. But not, and it ain't got nothing to do with it. He can't even along as black people. You've been trained to hate yourself. You've been trained to, you, you, you've been trained to second guess whatever comes out of a black man or a black woman's mouth, including your own head. So the very spiritual thoughts that come in your own head, you're trained to question those. And I know that for a fact because you bring those fucking questions to me. What do you mean when that means? It means you have been told, why the fuck are you even involved in me in this conversation? What that mean when that mm. happened, Panic? It means you have been told. Why are you asking me what the... So you don't even trust what comes in your own fucking head. Panic, I had a dream and there was a blue lady in there. Who's the blue lady? How the fuck would I know who a blue lady is yeah. in a dream? If you're in a dream, ask that motherfucker. You know what's so profound to people? Oh, Panic, <laughs> uh, 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 this is profound to people. Panic, you know, this spirit keeps talking to my kid and... I'm trying to do this and trying to do that, and I put this in there. How do I stop the spirit from talking to my kid? I said, do you ever ask the spirit what it wants? No, I, I never thought of that. I said, why don't you just ask the spirit, have the kid ask the spirit directly, or the kid just talk to him instead of trying to ignore him, talk to him. Oh, oh. And then they always call back, oh, my goodness. And he said we could do that, and it's always good news. Always good. been trained by horror movies. Yeah, all of this. There, there could be some terrible shit on it. I tried to look for the most terrible shit. I could, I found nothing. I remember Bob used to say, "Nah, I would say it too." I'm actually disappointed. I've never run into hmm. anything, and I've done all that demonic shit that you could think of. I did everything but have a fucking seance, and nothing has been out of my league. There's just nothing there. Once you claim it with your mind, see, once you claim you own everything, then you own it. But if you claim I'm from Africa, you have a mentality that somewhere else, somebody else is from some, somewhere else, which means when you deal with spiritual work, you think there are spirits from somewhere else. 
All of this shit is from your wow. mind, even so-called negative spirit. You're a negative person, you're going to experience negative spirit. But if you up your fucking vibration, that's what all the organs for. That's all the work you're doing is for a vibration. So when you're vibrating and dealing with spirits, you're dealing with higher vibratory spirit. But if you understand the concept, it's all directed from your mind. Your mind is all. Ain't nothing can touch your ass. But it right. only can touch you. It's only happening because you allow it. It's your psychological makeup, your psychological mentality. You from Africa, they from Europe. That means some spirits are good and some spirits are bad. No, it's low and high. Ain't got, spirits ain't thinking about, I'm a bad guy. You know, I'm going to do bad shit. Depression is a spirit. It has nothing to do with bad. It comes to you when you keep saying, you know, something that I think I'm depressed. I feel sad all the time. And somebody says, you know, that might be depression. You know something? Let me go see a doctor. What's your symptoms? Well, I'm sad because, you know, uh, the Chinese people took over Africa. And, you know, I'm really sad. Oh, that's depression. <laughs> Here's a pill. You agreeing with it, and there's a spirit going, okay, you're asking for me to show up. I'm a deity. I show up. Not because I'm bad, not because I want to do something evil, because you said I, you said come in. You say you're happy, then but, there's a spirit of happiness that comes in. I tell people, just sit with yourself and pretend laugh sporadically. It won't be, it will be less than 15 seconds you'll start to really laugh. Just, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God. Nigga. <laughs> Hold on. I can't breathe. <laughs> That's a meditation, nigga. That's a meditation, yeah. my nigga. That's what you do. Yep. And before you know it, everyone around you starts to have infect. I did it at Lexus. Infectious laughing with us. Now, here's the thing. Your conscious mind know you bullshit, but your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. It just receives the information <laughs> as happiness. You choose to be happy. In your status, when somebody... When when you spill that coffee on your shirt, you gotta go. Oh, shit, look at this shit. I'm a, I'm a fucking slob. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. This is terrible. I got a job interview. Holy oh, shit. This is gonna be fucked <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got it. Holy oh, shit. Coffee. It, 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 you mad as a fuck, but you trying to get it out that way. You just really become happy. You're choosing to do these things. So when you choose Africa is suffering, all you're saying is, I'm suffering. Because you, de- you know in other mm. sentences you say, I am Africa. Then you say, the Chinese people are pimping us. Then you're really saying, I'm being pimped. Mm. See, once you don't what claim is your this contact world as information? your... Okay. Brother Patty, well, people... you got... we're coming mm-hmm. up on 930. I've... We we uh okay. we gotta bring it to a wrap because how okay. can people tap in? How can people get in touch with you? Easy. If you've never heard of me, just Google Brother Panic. You'll find more information than you'll be able to stand in a lifetime. Like I said, I've been lecturing for ten years. We dealt with every occult subject, still dealing with it. So just by Googling me, you'll find me and you'll find on the first page of Google of Brother Panic, my website comes up. Before you buy anything from me, I don't really need to sell anything to you because I'm really just overworked now because after 10 years of speaking of my products and all of this documented information, um, you know, people are just buying it constantly. So I don't need nothing to sell. I recommend you understand my work before you buy one thing. One of the flagship products is something called the Herb Pack I sell. It is, let me say this here and now, a very long waiting list if you buy from me. Don't think I'm eBay or Amazon. You're going to wait because you're going to wait first come, first serve, and people had this idea way before you got the right idea to buy an herb pack. I sell books, spiritual baths, oils, among other things. I have classes. I've been doing classes for years. C. Freeman L. gave me the class curriculum through channel. Uh, I have a book. My second book is being edited now. My first book is The Occult Origins of Civilization, uh, Part 1, Hollywood. I deal with the psychological Willie Lynch uh, attack of the black man in movies. I deal, there's three parts. I deal with some TV. So if you Google me, you'll find my website, which is called Occult Lectures, which is my official YouTube page, page Occult Lectures, with an S, occultlectures.com. Go there. That's where you'll find everything, radio shows, anyways, how to email me. So I'm real easy to find by just Googling Brother Panic. That's all you have to remember. 
And uh, December 16th, I'm going to tear down New York yet again. I'm coming with some A game. Rich said bring A game. That's what's coming. We have a, a surprise or a, not really a surprise, but a good treat. There's a rapper, B.O.B. Most of the young kids would know him. Some of the old folks may know him. He's going to be in the building. He's, he's a pop star that became conscious and really gave up his pop fame on the level that wow. it was for consciousness. Never seen nothing like that. Never seen nothing oh, like yeah. that. You told him at the top of his pop game. He gave it up for conscious. He's going to be there. He's going to tell his story. Neil deGrasse Tyson went to war with him. Bill Nine, the science guy, went to war with him, and we said he was a clone. That's how weak we are. We didn't see one of our own being out there, but I did. And then I told him, come to me for counsel. Actually, he seen me, and he was quoting my stuff, and people told me that because I don't listen to, you know what I mean, um, that music. But when I did, it's a whole nother thing. But I eventually had counsel, and we've been, talk- we've been friends now for a year. And his story is absolutely incredible. He's going to tell it. He's on Rich's documentary because ultimately Brother Rich created the documentary, The God Frequency, which he's going to premiere the, uh, 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 a clip from it. B.O.B. was on it with me, and he's going to tell his story. So that's a, 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 a real treat to have a brother like that there. Real humble brother, you'll find out for yourself. And um, so he's going to be there with me. My, my queen, Khadija, is going to speak. You know, Rich has heard. She's opened up for me before. Rich has heard her. He's just put up an interview with her, so you need to check for her. I can't wait to hear Dr. Dr. Phil, Dr. Nalani. Uh, I can't wait to say, see A.A. Rashid. And, of course, my main ace, me and him had a radio show for a while, Dr. Lean Day. I can't wait to see Uncle Hank. Uncle Hank, I can't wait to see what Uncle Hank is selling because he's been telling me all the new stuff he's been doing. So I can't wait to get my grubby paws on some of that stuff, you know. So it's going to oh, be yeah. real exciting. We're going to be there December 16th. It's something you need to show up for. Uncle Hank has given, listen to the, you need, you're probably going to need to listen to this show over again. There's, you know, Brother Phil was on tonight, and I know he took it to your asses. So, uh, oh, so, yeah. Uh, so it's probably a show, action-packed, real good show. You're probably going to have to listen to it again. Then you can get the uh, address and the information. And if you're too far out, can't make it to live stream it, brother, uh, our brother Uncle Hanky, you know, and put it up. So, you know, all's good, easy you got contact it. if you've never heard of me. But you, you, you're going you're gonna to have to be ready to put your radical uh, uh, thinking on because I'm going to raise and challenge everything you thought you were investing in. As you can see, mm. some of it happened tonight. I say, I say. I speak, I want to thank yes, you, I speak brother in the Fanatic. same tone as my brother. Yes, sir. You're going to say, yes, go ahead, finish your sentence. Well, I was going to say, you speak um, in the same I, I tone? speak in the same context, in the same vein, I believe, as to my best ability, as our brother Bobby Hammond did. He was one of the first to start talking and he's so I'm not radical with this about how we need to understand this world is ours, this universe is ours. So I'm picking up on an occult understanding that our brother already introduced to the world. And so a special it's not so shout radical. Out. It's only radical if you it's only radical if you didn't hear it before, but but it's actually not radical to the conscious community if you do your work. Shout out to Bobby Hemmett. Happy birthday, Brother yes. Shabazz. Happy birthday yes. to all the Sagittarians yes, in the audience. Happy birthday. Hey. Thank you. Happy birthday. Brother Panic, for this yes, show. sir. Thank we'll you. do it again anytime you, anytime you want. We'll do it again, Brother Hank. You got it. You got it.
sideways to the shore, part of the ocean. The stars high above. 